Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing nicotine and the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. Okay, so we've seen how uh, the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor is this pentamer. Okay, so it's made up of five uh, receptor subunits, and each one of these subunits has the membrane-spanning topology like so. Here's the amino terminus of the polypeptide, here's the C terminus, and in going from the amino terminus to the C terminus, you first have this cis loop here, you then span the membrane four times, and then you return, you get to the carboxyl terminus, and it too is on the extracellular side of this plasma membrane here. Okay, so you make five of these sort of subunits here, uh, the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor subunits, and you put them together in this pentamer. Okay, right. So, in the human genome, how many different uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptor subunits do we have? Well, in the human genome, we have 17 genes, okay? So 17 genes, which all have slightly different sequences of organic bases, and all code for slightly different um, uh, um, polypeptides with slightly different combinations of amino acids, but they are similar enough that they all can form a membrane-spanning topology like this, and they can all function as a fifth of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Now, to help us understand these 17 genes, what we've done is uh, classify them into families. So we have the alpha family of genes for the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor subunit, which contains 10 genes. It contains the alpha 1 gene, and then you go through, continue on, alpha 2, all the way up to alpha 10. So you have alpha 1 to 10. And all of them are separate genes coding for slightly different subunits, and they're all put into this alpha family. Then you have the beta family of um, nicotinic acetylcholine receptor subunits. And this beta family has four uh, different genes within it. So you have the beta 1 gene, the beta 2 gene, and I might as well write these all out, beta 3, and then beta 4. And again, these are all separate genes which go for slightly different proteins, which can all function as a fifth of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor pentamer. Okay, and then finally you have how many genes are left? We've done 14 of them now. 10 plus 4 is 14. So there are three left. And these final ones, they're not clustered into families. Instead, they are just the gamma gene, the delta gene, and the epsilon gene. So that is the 17 genes which code for subunits of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Okay, so how do you actually assemble these into pentamers, i.e., is it the case that you have to pick one of these genes and stick with it? I.e., if I say pick alpha-1, is the only sort of nicotinic acetylcholine receptor I can build from those alpha-1 subunits a nicotinic acetylcholine receptor that I make by using this gene five times to make five proteins and sticking those five identical proteins together to make what will be known as a homo pentamer, okay, because all of the subunits in the pentamer are the same? Well, basically, no. You don't just make homo pentamers. It's not that simple. Instead, you can make pentamers where you use different subunits, basically, in each of the slots. And those are known as heteropentamers, where you use different uh, subunits in each of the slots of the pentamer. That's known as a heteropentamer. Okay, right. So, there is a humongous great scope for making an awful lot of different nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. And in the human body, there are an awful lot of different nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. However, I'm going to show you the structure, the protein composition of the four or five, four and a half, we'll say, um, the five main nicotinic acetylcholine receptors that are important in human physiology or pharmacology or whatever you would call this. Okay, so uh, let me show you them then. So we'll start off uh, with the uh, form that's in skeletal muscle. So basically, if we have our skeletal myofiber here, 
so this is a muscle cell here, then the alpha motor neuron, which innervates the myofiber, okay, so this is an alpha motor neuron, it releases acetylcholine onto the myofiber. So the neurotransmitter it uses to uh, cause the myofiber to contract is acetylcholine. Okay, so it releases acetylcholine onto the myofiber and that will cause it to contract. That means the myofiber must have some sort of nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, or at least some sort of acetylcholine receptor on it. And indeed, this is a nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. So we now want to look at this nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, what is its uh, subunit composition? Is it a homopentamer or is it a heteropentamer? And basically, it's a heteropentamer. Okay, so it's often referred to as the alpha 1, 2, okay, beta 1, delta epsilon heteropentamer, or nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Now, this tells you the exact uh, composition of subunits that it has. So let me show you this. Okay, so if this is our receptor viewed from the top, so we're viewing it as though from up here. So we're a little person sitting up here looking down. This is what we're seeing. So here are the five subunits making up uh, the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and we can see that we have two alpha-1 subunits, one beta-1 subunit, and a delta and an epsilon. Now, the two alpha-1s are positioned here and here. Okay, the delta is positioned here, the beta-1 up here, and the epsilon here. So that's how they're positioned relative to one another, basically. Okay, now where are the acetylcholine binding sites? Well, basically, the acetylcholine binding sites are between protein subunits, okay? So you have one acetylcholine binding site between the delta and the alpha-1 subunit, and you have another acetylcholine binding site between the epsilon and the alpha-1 subunit. So these two pink rings, they represent the acetylcholine binding sites. So ACH for short for acetylcholine, and then binding sites. Okay, right, so uh, what else should I tell you about this? I should also say that this is the adult form of the skeletal muscle uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. In uh, fetal humans, in, when we are within the womb, we have a different receptor on our uh, myofibers, and it basically differs by one protein subunit. So instead, in the fetus, the skeletal muscle nicotinic acetylcholine receptor is the alpha-1-2, beta-1, delta, gamma subunit. So this is the fetal form of uh, the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. And the only way it differs is that instead of having an epsilon subunit here, you instead have a gamma subunit there. Okay, so that's how the fetal skeletal muscle nicotinic acetylcholine receptor differs from the adult uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Okay, so that's the skeletal muscle uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. And this is why I said that we were going to discuss four and a half because if you count these as two separate ones, we'll have five, uh, but they're very much so related. Okay, so let's discuss the other three now. Okay, so let me get another piece of paper. So, uh, the next important one that I'll tell you about is the one that is in autonomic ganglia. Okay, so when you have uh, sy sympathetic and parasympathetic neurons, which come out of the spinal cord, okay? So let's say we have the spinal cord here. So this represents the spinal cord, or a section of the spinal cord. Okay, so it's this great big cord of neurons, well, of nervous tissue. And then let's say out of the spinal cord comes a sympathetic or parasympathetic neuron, i.e. an autonomic neuron. Now, the autonomic neurons which come out of the spinal cord and have their cell bodies in the spinal cord, these do not synapse directly onto the target. They are known as preganglionic neurons, or preganglionic autonomic neurons, if you're, uh, you want to be really proper, autonomic neurons. 
okay? Uh, and basically, they synapse onto another neuron, and this goes for both sympathetic and parasympathetic neurons, okay? And they synapse onto what's known as a post-ganglionic neuron, so this is the post-ganglionic autonomic neuron, and basically the post-ganglionic neuron then synapses with the actual target protein. Oh, sorry, not with the target protein, with the target structure. So I'll just put this here, some generic target here. Okay, so basically the post, sorry, the pre-ganglionic neuron uh, relays its information to this post-ganglionic neuron here. And I'll draw the post-ganglionic neuron in red here. And I'll draw the pre-ganglionic neuron in green. Now, in both the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, the neurotransmitter that is used to transmit the signal from the pre-ganglionic neuron in green here and the, to the post-ganglionic neuron in red is acetylcholine. Okay, so the molecule that goes between these two is acetylcholine. And on the post-ganglionic neuron, you have a receptor for this acetylcholine, which is a nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. And this nicotinic acetylcholine receptor is on the post-ganglionic neurons of both uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic neurons. Okay, so this is what's known as the ganglionic form of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Okay, so let's now discuss the subunit composition of the ganglionic nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Okay, so again we'll draw one of these cartwheel diagrams where you can see the, um, the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor from above. Okay, so here it is. And the ganglionic form of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor is often known as the alpha-3-2, beta-4-3, heteropentamer. And this again tells us exactly which um, subunits it has in it. So it has two alpha-3 subunits and three beta-4 subunits. So how are they arranged? Well, here is our first alpha-3, and here's our second alpha-3, and then everywhere else is just a beta-4. So that's how they're arranged. They're arranged with a single beta-4 subunit separating the two alpha-3 subunits. Okay, and again, these ganglionic forms of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, they have two binding sites for uh, acetylcholine. So one here and one also there. So two binding sites for acetylcholine. Okay, so we'll continue this discussion in the next video where we'll talk about the CNS forms of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. And then we'll talk about uh, the differing sensitivities of these main four or five uh, forms of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor to nicotine. And then finally, we'll look at how uh, the addiction to nicotine develops.